five o'clock on the Wednesday, and it's time for Craig and Marlon's Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Marlon. Welcome back to another review show right here on Magic TV. This is where we look at the latest and greatest products, and we give you our honest opinion as to what we think of them, don't we? And we've got lots of bad tricks. We've got lots of tricks today. If you're looking for one of those review shows where everything's wonderful and everything's brilliant, uh, stop right now, thank you very much. Look elsewhere, because there's a lot of stuff on this show that sucks, to be perfectly honest. There's some stuff We're that's gonna okay. Break <laughs> We're going to be breaking a lot of stuff. There's some stuff that's okay. There's some stuff that's terrible. And there's maybe a trick that I think is quite good. But we're going to get to that a little bit later on. And it's going to be tricky. We're going to start off with a trick that honestly is just one of the worst tricks I've seen. Now, uh, if you listen to the Magic Podcast with myself and Lloyd Barnes, Lloyd not only loves this trick... But he's actually in the trailer. He actually did the trailer for this trick. I feel sorry and for him. It, it's crazy that Lloyd likes this trick because, and, and it, it, it's terrible. Let's have a look at that right now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is Replica by Jimmy Strange. And um, Replica by Jimmy Strange. Now, as I said, uh, Lloyd Barnes did the tutorial, uh, not the tutorial. Lloyd Barnes did the trailer for this. He's in the trailer. And Lloyd absolutely loves this. Now, I hate this. I hate it as well. And that's what I mean. Look, just because we give something a bad review doesn't mean it's terrible. Some, one man's trash is another man's treasure. With that in mind, Lloyd's mental because this is absolutely terrible. What this is, right, you know, like sometimes you, you look at a product and it's pure quality and everything about it is quality. I hadn't seen the trailer when I watched this and I went and looked at the trailer. And as you would imagine with Lloyd Barnes, the trailer looks great. And it's like, oh, my gosh, I really want to get this. The trailer really sells you on this. And then when you open it up. <laughs> And you look at it, it doesn't scream quality, it screams cheap. So, for example, you have to force one of four celebrities. So, rather than, like, supplying you with maybe some gaffed cards or supplying you with a really clever way of doing this, there's eight cheap business cards here. Just the cheapest business start card stock you can imagine. And Jimmy's solution to this is just to write the names of celebrities on here and then uh, use it like a cram one-on-one -on -one deck to use the force. Like, that is just, it's an example of, like, you open something up, like Cuban bottle, for example. You open it up and everything's quality, and it's like, oh, look at the craftsmanship here. You look at this, and it's kind of like, well, obviously Jimmy has put this together on the cheap. Does it come with the lighter? It doesn't come with the lighter. I had to supply the lighter as well. And now what it is... have to supply the lighter oil. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't think that's too much of an issue. What this is, basically, it's the blister effect. So, and I've used Branded by Tim Trona for a long time. I love Branded. The, the original Blister Effect, and Jason Poulter's version is really good as well. I think it's called One Degree Burn. Is that you have somebody think of a playing card, and you light a lighter, and then when you light a lighter, you, you burn your fingers, and you show the blister, and the blister is in the shape of, for example, a Seven of Diamonds. Uh, that's the original blister effect. Now, there's several ways that you can actually achieve this. And, you know, Jason Poulter's method is really good because he's got this thing that you've got in your pocket. And depending on where you press, you can get a large combination of playing cards. Branded is great because it's actually the shell is built into the lighter so that um, so that when you hold the lighter, you're automatically getting the um, the impression because that's what it is. It's an impression. Right. Um this is cheap as hell because what the, the difference between this and your normal um, uh, sort of blister effect is with this, you're not having somebody pick a playing card. You're having somebody pick a celebrity um, and you're having and then you're lighting your your fingers. And when you look at the fingers, the picture of the uh, celebrity is right there on the tips of your fingers. So I'm going to do a performance of it. OK, and then when I've done a performance, we'll talk about what we think. Spoiler, it's terrible. Let's have a look at a performance right now. Okay, Ryan, I'm going to do some incredible mind reading for you now. Are you ready? Yeah. I've got different cards here, and each one has got a different celebrity written on it, okay? Okay, yeah. Uh, there's like eight different celebrities all together. I'm yeah. going to deal cards onto the table anytime you want to. Just say stop. Stop. That one there? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. So you could have stopped on this one. That would have been Sandra Bullock. You could have stopped on Elvis Presley. You could have stopped on uh, any of these is the point. Okay. Can you have a look at this celebrity? Do you uh, recognise who it is? No, I don't really know. Then could you show your mom and ask her if she would know the celebrity? Yeah. Okay, show the camera, right? Don't show me. Yep. Yeah. Okay, very, very good. And we'll put it away here inside the thing. There you go. Gone, but not forgotten. 
Uh, now, don't try this at home, Ryland. It is very important that you don't do this. I have in my pocket down here a, uh, a lighter. Let me just get it here. I have a, uh, a lighter, okay? And I want you to watch. Yes, yes, I have a lighter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to light the lighter, and when I do, something amazing is going to happen. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Watch. If I just uh, light the lighter and... Ow! Ow! I burnt my fingers, but look now... There's a blister on my thumb, and can you see who that blister is? Um, no, because you don't know the celebrity. Say the name of the celebrity out loud. Um, what was the name of the celebrity, Sarah? Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Sarah, look at my thumb. What does the blister look like on my thumb? I've no idea. It look at it again. Is that showing? <laughs> I'm guessing it's supposed to be Marilyn Monroe, is it? Yeah, it's meant to be Marilyn Monroe. Does that's it look the person. Yeah, that's oh, the that's... face, maybe. Yes, it's the face of Marilyn Monroe. Can't you tell? Uh, no, no, because it's a stupid trick. That could be anybody. <laughs> it could be like some sort of water or something on there. <laughs> you know. Okay, so Sarah saw that for the first time. Your mom saw that for the first time. She thought it was awful. Like she couldn't even tell the people were Simon Reed. No, and, and after the performance, she's like, "Well, maybe you did it badly in performance. Why don't you just?" push your thumb against it because what you have here is you have four little discs right so you have four little discs and each one of the discs has got a face on it and the whole idea is that you can take these little faces and you can you can uh, you stick them to a lighter so you stick one of the so you need four lighters so first of all it's a massive step back from a methodology. Yeah, because one of these is stuck on each lighter. So in your pocket, you're going to need four lighters. If you follow the method that Jimmy talks about. But you're how gonna are you need... going to know which one's which, though? Well, it, that, that's covered in the method. So, you know, you know the order of the cards. So they say stop wherever they say stop. You should either show them this one or this one, and you'll know what the card is. It's fairly easy to know what the celebrity is. That's not a problem. But the fact is, you need four lighters set up for the outcome. Where you look at branded, and it's like one gimmick uh, uh, built into a lighter. You look at one degree burn, and it's like this one gimmick that you can just surreptitiously press in your pocket. This is like a backwards in terms of methodology. But then, you know, it's very easy to see the blister with a seven or a diamond or a club or a heart or an ace or whatever it is. With this, you just can't tell. Like, I had Sarah, like, you don't know who Freddie Mercury is. You don't know who Marilyn Manson is, Marilyn Elvis, Monroe, sorry. I know who Elvis You know who Elvis Presley, Presley is. But I had Sarah sit there, and I pushed this thing as hard as I can. I took it off the lighter. I pushed it as hard as I can. And I was like, right, who's that? And she's like, I've got absolutely no clue. It doesn't who even look like... That's meant to be Freddie Mercury. It doesn't even look like a face. But even if it does look like a face... It's like, now, what, what uh, Jimmy says on the tutorial is he says, don't forget, they're already thinking of a celebrity. So even if it looks just a little bit like the celebrity, they're going to, be able, they're going to have that celebrity in your mind and they're going to be able to fill in the blanks. Their mind will fill in the blanks. And that's just absolute rubbish. That's just terrible thinking. And that's just a complete fabrication and lie. This doesn't work. Now, Lloyd has said to me that he did this on his wife and his wife loved it and... She thought it was amazing and she was blown away. I can only assume that Lloyd's wife was high. That's the only assumption I can come up with with this because I don't understand how anybody can find this impressive. Yeah, now, Lloyd has challenged me to do this in the real world and I will. We're going to do this on a review show revisited. Oh, and I think I know what's going to say, what people are going to say. They're going to go, oh, is that is that really Marilyn Monroe? Okay, I suppose maybe if I squint and stand on one leg and look at one. So, A, but also, even if it was awesome, even if these were brilliant, even if these made the best, clearest impression in the world, and I did this, and immediately you knew who it was, it's still kind of not as good, in my opinion, as branded, because it's obviously a trick. You know, it's like, think of a celebrity. Ow! Now look, the blister has turned into your celebrity. And it's kind of like, well, obviously it's not a blister. And I think part of the problem it with the blister... Even look like it doesn't look like a blister because it's so big because the seven and diamond again using seven and diamonds for example it can be quite small um, and, and it's conceivable that maybe you could have a blister that kind of looks like a diamond this just is ridiculous it's it's just ridiculous as a trick now the other thing that he does on the tutorial which is so funny he talks about how you can actually um make it appear with soot 
and he's got this uh, soot or ash or charcoal, and he's got this little like pot of charcoal, and he's he's stuffed his finger against one of these uh, one of these discs, and he's like, look, if I get some charcoal and. No, I need more charcoal. No, I'm going to need some more charcoal. Let, no, let me get some more charcoal. And there's freaking charcoal everywhere. His hands are covered. The table's covered. Everything's covered. And you rub it off and he's like, now, now it starts to look like the celebrity. No, no, it doesn't, Jimmy. No, it looks like a big black spot on the tip of your finger that maybe has one little spot where an eye could be. And the only thing that looks half decent is when you... Uh, he's got this idea about... Um, taking one of these discs, using prip stick or glue, rubbing glue over it and sticking it onto um, a, a bill, okay? Uh, and then putting it on there. So it kind of creates an impression of the celebrity on the bill and then putting charcoal on there and rubbing it away. And, it, and that's the only way it kind of looks like the celebrity. The problem is he doesn't tell you how to actually do this in the real world. So for example, he says, this is how you prep the bill, then you put charcoal on, job done. The thing is that doesn't stay like that forever. So like, what am I gonna do if I wanna do this in a restaurant? Do I prep it before I go? And how long is it gonna last? And, and, and what, like all of it, I've got a theory that if somebody creates a trick and they don't talk how to get into the trick and they don't talk how to get out of the trick, then it's obviously something they've never performed. I personally think this is a cash grab. I personally think this is a um, a cash grab because, you know, Jimmy Strange, uh, is his name Jimmy Strange? Jimmy Strange has seen um, how popular the blister effect is and he's gone, I'll have a bit of that money, I'll have a bit of that, um, I'll go and get myself some of the blister effect and he's come up with a half-assed, half-baked idea that wouldn't fool a blind monk, actually... I don't think a blind monkey would even realise a trick was actually happening. Uh, because it's like, it's like, it's like, look, I think it just like you self-harming yourself. Look, oh, uh, hang on, let me just light this lighter. And, uh, ow, ow, right, oh, can you see that? Yeah, you've just burnt yourself, you idiot. What, what, it doesn't look like anything. It doesn't look like you're doing a magic trick. It looks like you're inflicting pain on yourself. Maybe you're some sort of, um, you know, sadist or masochist or something. One I don't know. One of those things puts fire down the throat. Yeah, well, they're just weird, aren't they? Um, I, I, this, this gets, I don't know, a, a buyer beware from me and 0%. Do not buy this. Do not be suckered into buying this. Same. I mean, I, you know, Lloyd likes it. I, I want to see Lloyd do it. Blackpool, I'm going to get Lloyd to perform this to some lay people and see the reaction it gets. Of course, I just don't see it myself. I, I this, how much are you giving it? 0%? I'm giving it 0%. Yeah. yeah. Now, unfortunately, we can't destroy this. Because Lloyd likes L it. No, no, that's not true. I couldn't give a crap about Lloyd. And the reason that... Oh, sorry, I shouldn't swear. I couldn't give a darn about Lloyd. Um, the reason is because Lloyd has challenged me to do this in the real world. In a review show revisited. So here's what we're going to do, right? You're doing next, that, no, 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 that's you're fine. Doing next week, I will take this out. But I, I'm not old enough to use a lighter, so... Yeah, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. I don't mind. And I'm it looks terrible. I know you don't like doing the rubbish tricks. I'll do it. I'll go out next week. I'll go out to a restaurant or something and I'll do this. Um, and I know the reaction it's going to get. It's going to get a terrible reaction, but I'm going to put 110% into it. I'm going to do a review show revisited. I would love to be proven wrong. However, I'm right. This is, this is just not going to get a good reaction. And um, once I've proven that this is not going to get a good reaction, then we can take it and think of creative ways to destroy these. I want you to think about the best way to destroy these and throw them in the I bin. I don't know. I don't know. Have a think about it because they don't. A hammer wouldn't work. Maybe scissors wouldn't work. Maybe. Plastic. Um, what would you do with plastic? Uh, maybe we shoot them or something. No, I don't know. Shoot we'll them with a Nerf gun. Shoot them with a Nerf gun isn't going to help. You Look, hold it and I'll just go. No, because with your aim, you'll get my face. Look, it's zero percent. We're going to do it. We're going to do it on a review show revisited really, really soon. But honestly. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's zero percent from me. It's zero percent from him. Buyer beware. Do not um, be suckered into this. It's terrible. So next up, we have the remote viewing manual, and this is a booklet, basically. Uh, and I, I could, couldn't find the instructions for this. Like it came through the post, and I was like, right, okay, let's find it. Normally, the instructions are printed on a little card. Couldn't find the instructions anywhere. And I was flicking through it and I was like, how am I supposed to learn this? And then I only realised that like two or three pages in, they're printed in the book at the bottom. And I'm like, well, you know, I, how was I meant to know that? But anyway, 
Um, what this is, if you've ever seen the BIP book by Alec Azam, this is a longer, more boring, drawn out, technically difficult Absolutely. version uh, of that. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, Bitbook is great. I've done Bitbook for years. Well, I've done Bitbook 2.0 and all the different versions they've got. And it works really well with virtually no memory work. Um, you know, it works on a sort of a, um, well, I don't want to go into how it works, but it's, it's very accessible for all. This isn't. What you have is you have a book, right, that people can flick through. In all fairness, what's good about this, people can flick through the book, and as they flick through it, they're going to see different playing cards. Each page has a playing card. It has a symbol. It has a, um, uh, a what's it called, a city. It has a time, and it has a random word. It's got all of that, and there's 99 pages altogether, 100 pages. So you've got 100 pages, and each page has random stuff on it, a bit like Bitbook. And yeah, the whole what idea. What you've got is you've got a card, you've got a, some sort of city, you've got a time, you've got a symbol, and you've got a random word. Yeah. Now, the whole idea here is you're <laughs> going to see a performance of Ryland doing it in a minute. Uh, the whole idea here is you riffle up the deck, you get them to say stop. Wherever they say stop, obviously, uh, uh, you're going to open it up and you're going to let them look at all the information. You're then going to give them the book, and, and you're then going to be able to tell them all the information on the page that they're looking at. Now, First of all, the first problem is you have to riffle up the corner. And, and, and the reason for that is you have to look at the page number that they landed on. Um, and with that page number, you're going to be able to work out everything that they've got. So you're probably thinking, OK, well, that's cool. I can work out all the information as long as but I know their lots page and number. Lots and lots of memory work. So first of all, yeah, I mean, I, I can't do this. I've got a fairly good memory. I, I, not as good as you, which is why I got you to do this. But I've got a fairly good memory. But there's so much to remember. So first of all, when you get the card, when you get the, so say stop, Ryland. First of oh. all, when you get the thing, so you're looking at that page right there. Okay. Uh, so first of all, like, I'm just terrible at this. So first of all, um, uh, <laughs> uh, I have no idea. So first of all, what you have to do is you have to get the card, and the card is based on two mnemonics that you need to remember, which admittedly, you could probably rem uh, it's something that a lot of magicians already know, but there's a lot of mental juggling just to be able to get the card. Then after the card, you've got to get the um, uh, you've got to get the city, and in order to do that, I think there's something like thirteen cities, and you have to memorize the cities and the word and the number next to the cities. Then after the cities, you then have to get the time, and to get the time, you have to do. S some really fairly, it's not difficult, but it's complex You're going to have any maths. time in there at all. Yeah, you're going to do time. some fairly complicated maths to get them. It's just ridiculous. I, I spent a day practicing this and I just couldn't get past the second phase. I was just like confusing myself and Ryland's good at this sort of thing. And but I, I still hate this trick. Yeah, I it, I'm going to show you the performance now. It took Rye about 25 takes to get this, didn't it? Like, yes. he, And to put it into context, I can't remember the last time we had to do more than one take for a trick. You're going to see a trick later on that's got seven phases. We nailed it in one take. Ryland typically does something in one take. We get so many takes in order to get this performance you're about to see. And, because, and the thing that's seven fakes is actually quite good. It's the only good thing on this review show. Exactly, yeah. And we're going to do that in a bit. But this, yeah, so overly complicated. Such a ridiculous method. It's the sort of thing, it feels like the method has been put together to impress magicians. Like, oh, you know, you can just get them to look at the thing and then you can hand them the book and you can tell them everything. But laymen don't care about that. Look, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's run the performance and you'll see what I mean. I've got a remote viewing manual here and, the f and it was first published in 1954. Wow, it's used almost as old as your mom. Used to test psychic powers. Really? Yes. Are you telling me you're psychic? Yes. What am I thinking? I'm not going to tell you that at the moment. Okay, okay. But on every page there's a different thing. Right like here you've got, like, the, like, on every page you've got a symbol, a city, a time, a card, and a random word. Okay. Like that's feather, that's hood. Yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. Okay. okay. What I want you to do is, well... I just want you to say stop anywhere. Anywhere? Yeah, anywhere. Stop. Look at that page. Look at one of the pages. Yeah. That one. Um, yeah. Remember everything. The cards, the city, the time, the symbol, the random word. I got it all. 
Got it? I'm going to see. I'm going to test myself. Okay, so we'll start with the card. The card was was a was a number card, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It is a red card. Yes. It's a five. <laughs> yes. It's a diamond. It's a five of diamonds. It was indeed the five of diamonds, yes. Yes, now let's go on to the city. Okay. I think you have I think you have been here before actually. Yes, I have been here before. I've actually performed here. Um it begins with an E, doesn't it? It does begin with an E, yes. Um is it Edinburgh? <laughs> yes, it is Edinburgh Island, yes. Okay. Um we'll go on to the time. Do you know it or do you need to look it up? I'm looking at it right now. Okay. Yeah, I got it. It is the Nine thirty-four, isn't it? Yes, it is nine thirty-four. Yes, indeed. That random word we're going to. That random word could be anything in the world: purse, pillar, arcade, anything. But I, I get it's Thai. <laughs> yes, it is Thai. Yes. Um, and the symbol. Okay. The symbol yeah. is two bolts of lightning. It is indeed two bolts of lightning. There it is. Two bolts of lightning. The symbol, uh, the five of diamonds, Edinburgh, 1940. Yeah, that is absolutely incredible. Well done, Ryland. So that was a performance of Ryland doing it, which is an amazing performance. That was about 25 takes in. Amazing performance. Here's but I the... hate this trick. Yeah, I know you do. Here's the issue. You, this is the sort of trick you're going to have to do all the time. There's a lot to remember in this trick. There's a hell of a lot to remember. And if you stop doing it at any point, you're going to forget it. You know, like one of those tricks that when uh, you do it for ages and then you stop doing it for a while and you go back to it six months later and you pick it up and you can do it almost immediately. Yeah, that's not this. This is one of these tricks where you're going to have to almost run it every single day in order to remember the thing. And if you don't run it every single day, you're going to forget because there is literally... You've got to do it like five times a day. You're going to have to... There's so much to remember. So you're going to end up ultimately not doing this because it is such a complicated method. And, and, and the thing is, there's other ways of doing this. In reality, you're getting a card, a, a, a city, a time, a symbol and a word. Well, you can do that with a bit book or variations thereof. It's slightly different, but it's a much more accessible method. Or you can do a force or a peak with a deck of cards and then have like digital force bag and have a couple of different things in digital force bag. There's a lot of ways of doing this where you're not actually needing to go through the mental gymnastics that you need to go through in order to um, in order to pull this off. So yeah, and, um, I really just want to shoot this with a Nerf gun. I know you want to shoot it with a Nerf gun. No, look, here's Afterwards, the thing. can you hold this book and I'll just go... With look, the best here's here's the thing, right? I'm not going to do this. Neither. You're not going to do this. It's so, I can't stress how complicated this is. And the other thing is, there's no live... Forget there's no live performances. There's no tutorial with this. You get a PDF. You get a 15-page PDF. Um, that you have to go onto the Murphy's website to download. So you download it as a digital asset. Why is there not a YouTube video in here? Why, when you're doing something like this, is that did the creator not put in there a little YouTube link so you can watch a live performance of this? Why, why is that the case? Why have you not got a live performance of this? Because honestly, I think you need a live performance of this. I also think that you need somebody, uh, uh, you need a tutorial going through this. I think it'd be a lot easier to follow with a tutorial than it is with a, uh, a PDF. And the tutorial, I think, needs to have a really long, lengthy discussion about memory techniques because, yeah... No one's going to do this. You're going to read through it and you're going to go, okay, because I started reading through it and I was like, okay, so that's how I get the card. Let me try this. Okay, right, okay. Now, how do I get that? Oh, wow, I'm going to remember all these. All right, okay, let me write them down and I'll see if I can remember them in a bit. What's that? Oh, my God. This is ridiculous. This is just stupid. As you go through it, you just go, this is nuts. Just because, laymen don't care. They don't care how clean this apparently seems to be. There's so many methods to do this. 
It solves a problem that doesn't exist. Exactly. I'm going to give this 0%. I don't like it. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to destroy... And it's not even the worst trick on the review show. No. I'm not going to destroy it. I don't think it needs destroying. But later on, I'm just going to shoot this with an knife. I'm not going to hold it. And I'm no, I'm not. I'm going to stick it up on the dartboard over there. Sure. And you can throw darts at it. No, I want to use a nerf gun. You can nerf gun it. Because <laughs> I, 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 we're never going to do it, so we may as well just use it for target practice. There you go, put it over there. It gets 0% from me. It gets 0% from Ryland. It's this is it at the moment. There you go, shot it with a nerf gun. Let's move on. So the next up, we have the Zenith deck by Manage. And I hate this. This is the worst to come to review show. Manage Cashel. Uh, this is the guy that created Switch that we gave a good review for. The uh, black envelope with the see-through thing. And, yes, I yeah. love that. Yeah, that's really good. This is not good. Um, this is terrible. I'm not good at all. So what this is, basically, is... And I, I'm going to give you another method of doing this that makes it slightly less pants. Um, but it's still pants. What, what we have here is a specially printed deck of cards, right? And how... Uh, it, uh, what happens is they have somebody... You have somebody name a card. You put the card down on the table. You put the rest of the cards away. And you say, hey, you know, every, I collect playing cards. Different packs of cards are named after different things. What was the card you named? Look, the cards, the pack of cards has the same name as the thing that you've, you've picked. It sounds complicated. Let me show you a performance first of all. This is exactly how Manage explains it should be uh, performed. Once we've done that, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you what I think. And I've got an idea about how to make it slightly better. Right, I'm going to show you a trick with a deck of playing cards, okay? Yes. Uh, the hard part here is getting them all out of the box, but I think I've done my best at that. There we go. So a pack of 52 playing cards, right? Uh, they're all red-backed, but it's the uh, it's the faces that's important. Uh, they're all there. They're all different. Is there a particular one that you like the look of? Um, King of Hearts. Your favourite card. <laughs> Do you, want to change your, do you want to change your mind or are you happy with the King of Hearts? I'm happy with the King of Hearts. If you're happy with the King of Hearts, then I am also happy with the King of Hearts. Okay. Now, I know that's your favourite card. I mean, you pick it a lot. But you had a free choice of any card at that point, didn't you? Yeah. You know, a lot of lay people don't know, but you know that every deck of cards has a different design. Um, yeah, well, most of them. Most cards. Backs have different designs, and they all have different names. So you've like got Providence red, blue, decks, black, but you've got bicycle Providence, cards, you've got bicycle, Providence decks. Yeah. Robot deck. Yeah, you've got all those different things. What's interesting is that you picked the King of Hearts. Do you know why? Do you know why the King of Hearts is kind of interesting? Why? Because this deck is actually a special deck of cards. It's actually a custom-printed deck of cards, and it's called the King of Hearts deck. And Whoa. you could have picked any card, but you picked the King of Hearts. So that's the performance. Now, there's there's more holes in that trick than Swiss cheese, in all honesty. So first of all, the cards cannot be examined in any way, shape or form. The cards also really can't be shuffled. Uh, and the reason they can't be shuffled is because every single one of the cards is pr specially printed on the back in a way that's obvious that they're specially printed. So, But they're also in a stacked order. So you can't really shuffle the cards, which wouldn't be too much of a problem if the trick was logical and made sense and was sound, but that's not the case, because okay, here's the thing. Terrible. Well, psychologically, let me explain why I don't like this, because sometimes people say to us on the review show in the comments, I don't understand why that we don't like this. So let's explain why we don't like this. So, first of all, it's an it's the deck is completely not examinable. Now, that's not an issue if the framing and the structure of the trick makes sense, right? That's not a problem at all. However, it is a problem in this trick. And let me explain why. You have somebody pick a card. That's the good part of it. It's a free choice. You put the card down on the table and, and, and you do something. And then you put the cards away in the box. When you put the cards away in the box, everybody's focused on that action. The reason, is ev the reason everyone's focused on that action is because they've named the card, you put the card down there, now they're focusing on what you're doing. It's not like something else has happened or you've misdirected them in another way. This is an on-beat, not an off-beat, an on-beat. In other words, the focus of the attention of the audience is on what you are doing, which is putting the cards in the box. When you put the cards in the box, you are doing quite a dodgy move. A move which is really dodgy that you don't really want to do in full view of an audience. Or if you do do it in full view of the audience, you have to do it in such a way where the focus is put elsewhere. Uh, but there's no mention of that. 
you just put the cards away and you do this really super dodgy move. Then you 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 say that uh, well this is the card that you picked and you know the presentation is these cards are named let's say they say the King of Hearts these these cards are named the King of Hearts deck and you turn the deck over and you show the King of Hearts deck that card box cannot be examined at all if they take the card he suggests in the tutorial give them the card box let them look at it for two seconds and then take it back because you want to put the other card back away in the box i don't think you could get away with look and it's obvious that he realizes they can't really hold it for too long because he's like oh take it back after a couple of seconds i don't think he can even give it out because here's the thing psychologically the the effect of this trick is the card box is printed in the name of their selected card. They will look at that. They will look where it says King of Hearts. As soon as they do, they realize that that is not a specially printed card box. They'll look at it and they will pull out what the method is. They will, they will, they will expose the method immediately. This is terrible routining. This is an example of somebody who had a decent idea for a trick. And let's be clear, this is a decent idea. But this is what happens within the magic community all of the time. Rather than focusing on working out methods and making it a little bit better and looking at it. And, you know, what, when you're creating magic, going and saying to a close friend that you can rely on, what do you think of this? Be honest with me. How many times do I create a trick and I show it you and I say, what do you think of this? And you go, actually, that's not very good. And it's not very good because this, 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 this. And I go back and I put something else together and I say, now what do you think of it? I do that all the time with you, don't yeah, I? Yeah, I'm like, well, that's a lot better. That's perfect. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and you need somebody. And I've got people like Nemi. I've got people like Alex and Kieran and uh, Ryland and Lloyd and people like that that are D that, that I can go to and I can speak to people like that. This guy hasn't done that. What this guy has done is he's literally put together this trick, uh, come up with the the method, and it just he's doesn't probably, work. He's probably asked someone who doesn't actually tell the truth, and they're like, they're just, re they're, I don't know how to explain it. Um, They've just said nice things about it because they're a friend of his. Yeah, yeah well, it's not actually good. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's what I think's happened here. So I spent five minutes working on it, and, and, and the two major problems for me is the the box can't be examined at a point where the focus is on the box because that's the revelation. The revelation of the card is the box and the box can't be examined and the fact that the move happens at precisely the wrong moment. So what I did is I spent 10 minutes trying to come up with a better method and uh, some people might th think this... You managed to do it. Well, some but people... It's, yeah. But it's still... It's still not great. I still wouldn't perform it. Um, it's a better method, in my opinion. Uh, I'll, I'll do a performance of it so that if anybody has been sucking in with it, I mean, if anybody has got this trick, um, you, can, you can maybe consider doing the method that I'm about to show you. And I'll explain in a second why I think it's a better method. So let's have a look at that performance right now. All right, Ryan, I'm going to show you something with a pack of cards, okay? Yes. And if I can take the cards out of the case, I think you'll quite like this trick. There we go. You've got the cards out. That's good. This is a Zenith deck of cards. I'll show the camera as well. Can you see where it says Zenith there? Yes. Is there anything on the other side? No, there's nothing in the... Uh, no, it's just a deck of cards. Nothing inside the card box. It's called a Zenith pack of cards. Okay. And I'm going to show you, um, using this deck of cards, I'm going to show you... Um, I'm going to show you, basically, the difference between an illusion and a magic trick. Okay. Using, uh, One of those big illusions. Yeah, not quite an optical illusion. I'm going to show you uh, the difference between an optical not illusion. Not like split press. So, no, not stage illusion. So, first of all, just as, you, as I go past, is there a particular card that you like to look off? Um, yes. Which one? Jack of Cool. No, Ace of Hearts. That one right there. You sure you want the Ace of Hearts? Yes, I do. You can change your mind if you want to, or if you're happy with the Ace of Hearts, that's cool. I think I'm happy with the Ace of Hearts. Okay, we're going to leave that right back there where you wanted it. Uh, we're going to get back. I'm going to use the Ace of Hearts to show you an illusion. Okay? okay, but we also need another card picked as well. So as I go down through the deck, just say stop. Stop. Uh, we've got the four of spades there as well. Is that okay? Okay, so ace of hearts and four of spades. The four of spades is going to be used to do a magic trick, but the ace of hearts is going to be used to do a, um, uh, an illusion. Okay? Uh, and don't worry about the four of spades for now. We're going to use the ace of hearts. Now, you could have picked any card. You picked the, four, the ace of hearts, didn't you? Yeah. And do you remember I said this is a Zenith deck of cards, yeah? yeah? I want you to watch. I'm just going to put the cards on top of the deck. Okay. And if I wave my hands over and snap my fingers, do you know what happens? What? Well, that deck of cards changes 
from a Zenith deck into an Ace of Hearts deck. Seriously, Whoa. look at it. It went from a Zenith deck to a, the Zenith has changed into an Eight of Heart, Ace of Hearts. But that's not a magic trick. Do you know what the magic trick is? Yeah. Do you remember when I showed the box was empty? Yeah. Well, if I snap my fingers, do you know what happens? What? Well, let me show you now. If I reach inside the box, you can actually see that inside there, we've got the Four of Spades, which was the card that you picked and we put there at the bottom of the deck. And it's now gone and it went inside the card box. But do you know why the Ace of Hearts thing was, uh, was an illusion and wasn't real? What? Because it never said Ace of Hearts. It only said Zenith the entire time. And you can examine the box and check it out. So first of all, I'm letting them look at the card box at the beginning. So they're looking at the card box. Now, in order for them to look at the card box, you have to show that it's not the King of Hearts or whatever. So you point out it's a Zenith card box. But you, the, the point of this is you're letting them have a look at the card box. Second of all, the other issue with their trick, in my opinion, is uh, it's a little bit clunky to get what you need to the right position in the deck. The way I just did it then, I used a cult. So I just literally, using the same setup that the, uh, the, the, the Manoj, was it Manoj? Manoj has put together, you can just cull the card. So you just literally cull the card and you're in pretty much the same position. Wait, does this say... Well, yeah. yeah. So you get them. So you're culling the card, and that achieves the same thing. But it allows you to, you know, you don't need to take the card out of the deck. It allows you to show the card, put it back into the deck. You've culled the card. Job done. Then you're going to force the gimmick. So then you're going to force, uh, and I use a riffle force, but you're going to force the gimmick. Now, what that allows you to do is that allows you to have this really nice visual moment of showing the box putting the deck down on top of the box, snapping your fingers, moving the card box, away, moving the deck away, and showing that now Zenith has turned into the name of the first person's card. And the nice thing is, the focus isn't on the box at that point, because you've, you've had them name a card, it's uh, the, you know, you've done the cull, you've done the force, and you go, right, remember the card, remember the card, I'm just gonna put the, the, the thing here. And also, it's not a dodgy move, you're not putting the cards away inside the box. You're literally just putting the cards on top of the box. So because you're putting them on top of the box, it, it, it's an easier move to do. If, you, if you're interested, I'm just doing a Kelly Bottom replacement or an Yvette Master move. And then that allows you to then show the box and you've got the same revelation. But now, because you forced the gimmick earlier on, you can then say, of course, you know, you've got the presentation. You can then say that the box that they looked at and was empty now has the second person's card in it. So now you're using, uh, this is like a Jason Dean type of move or a John Bourne type of move. They both came up with this, of, of taking the card out, apparently from the empty card box. So you've got an extra moment there. You then, however, have got a kicker at the end where you can go, of course, the whole thing was in your imagination. It, it doesn't say that. It just says Zenith. You, and then you can give them the box to look at. And that's what makes it stronger because you can give the box out to the member of the audience. But the cards are still not examinable. But so the issue is the card's not examinable, exactly. And, and I still don't like it. I mean, even though I've put this second method together, I still hate this. Uh, it's a long... I, I wanted to show you that. I wanted to share that with you. Uh, I get a lot of feedback on the channel about how, you know, you like it when I try to come up with other methods or tricks. However, if you've got this... I'm giving this 0%. What are you giving it? I'm giving this 0%. And we've already even threw the cards in the bin. We threw the cards in the bin in disgust after we filmed the performance yesterday. Uh, however, if you've got this, here's what I advise you to do. I advise you to take your card, 0% from him, 0% from me. Take your cards, throw them in the bin. Then what I suggest you do is take the box. Make sure the zenith is pointing away from you. That's very important. And then you need to find a nine-year-old that's got a hammer. I need to find a nine-year-old that's got a hammer. Thank you. And then what you're going to do, we're going to put it that way, because I don't, you're going to, uh, you're going to, you're going to destroy the box, because that'll make you feel better. Something like this. You missed it completely. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Let's take a look, let me show you. Would you like me to teach you how to hammer a box? So if you do that, oh, that's not good. Look, look. you do that. Sure. Take it, put it in the bin. Okay. Oh, wait, we're going again, are we? Watch your fingers, mommy will kill me. No, 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 no. You don't want to put your finger. No. What are you? Now that's just destroyed it completely. <laughs> put it in the bin. Go put it in the bin. I'll hold on to the hammer. That's what you want to do. If you've got the Zenith deck, rip it up, put it in the bin, take the cards, put them in the bin. It's an absolutely terrible trick. Manager, if you're watching this, we want more towards Switch and less towards the Zenith deck.
Yes. So the final routine we've got today is Smart Cubes Plus, Plus. version by Taiwan Ben. Taiwan Ben is the guy that made the bottle that you like doing with the Coca-Cola that turns into the Five of Clubs. You know that one? Yeah, you know the Five of Clubs. It's oh, over yeah, there. I know. It's over there, yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. Um, you, got, you can get a medium parlor label, version. Label, that yeah, that's it. You can get a medium parlor version. You can get a large stage version. Does he do like big boxes? Like this is big, that's big. Mm, he does, yeah. Um, this is uh, the parlor size version. You can get a really big stage size version. Um, this is a really cool routine. I with love one this. major I drawback. Love this. Rylan loves this. There is one, and I've. I don't I'm doing this on the review show special, not you. You can get out of it. Yeah, what, you mean the review show revisit it? Yeah. That's fine. I, I don't. I haven't learned it, and you have. Uh, this is really good. However, there is one drawback which we're going to get to in a bit. But if you haven't seen this, it's quite a lengthy routine. It's a seven phase routine. Each phase builds from the previous phase. So if you haven't seen it before, Ryland's going to perform it for you, and then we're going to talk about what we think. As I say, we think it's really good, but there is one major negative. Let me show you something really weird. I've got this tube here, and I've also got these blocks. They're numbered 654321, and the tube is numbered... Uh, no, that's number... Yeah, 654321. This is numbered 123456. If I just put the tube, a box... I set, I set my fingers, look, nothing's happened just yet, because we sat twice, and it matches. I, I, I don't understand this. Look, so if you didn't know what's going on, I'll do it again. But I, 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 I don't understand this. Look, I just put them in, different to them. So though, this is going to be ordered six, five, four, three two one so i put them in a different order i put the tube over the box and yet still look different but I've, i i think i might have something done yeah this is really weird do you know what if i take these out i put them look we'll do something different now we'll do something different and maybe i can fall it Look, I go six, five, four, three, two, one. Look, I'll make it weird. Look, there's no way I can do this. Look, I turn the blocks around, put them in. 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 Turn, turn the blocks around and put it in. Look, so there's no way this can work because they're on either side, so surely it won't work. When I snap, it's not confused. I, I, I literally don't understand this, but hang on, let me try something different. I bet it won't be able to do this. Look, I've put... Look. I'll put this on first. I'll put this on first. And then what I'll do is I'll put these numbers on. So we'll go for a six, a five. Look, there's no way I can do this. Look, a six, a five. A four, a three, a two, and a one. So there's no way it can do this at all. I think I pulled it, but I don't know if I have. Look, snap. I don't think I have pulled it. I don't get this. What the? Look, I'll try something different. This time, what I'll do, take them out and put them in. But this time, I'll do it the opposite way round. But first, I'll put them on like that. Okay. So I'll put them in the opposite way round. So instead of one, three, five, we'll go two, four, five. Okay. So that's the six, and where's the five? 
here's the five, here's the four, here's the three, here's the two, and there's the one. Can I want to snap my fingers? I really don't get this. I don't get this at all. I don't get this at all. What the? Look. Look, do you know what? I'll take these out. I'll put these on the thing like this. So I'll go, no, we'll go six first actually. I'm changing my mind. I've got six fives. Six, five, four, three, two. Oh, the three's all the around. Three, two, one. Okay. So, and let me just. Mm. With the blocks, I'll put these in a random order. So, I'll just let me, so I can see them. What we'll do is we'll go for a three, a four, a five, six, um, a one, and a two. That's what we'll go for. Okay. Now, when I put this on, Snap my fingers. Ah, uh, what? Wait, hang on. If I get you to name it, Mummy, Mummy, I'll get you involved. What I want you to do is I want you to name one to six. Five. Um, five first. Okay, five first. Then what? Two. Two, then one. One. One, then. Three. Three, then. Six. Six, then. Four. Four. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these blocks off. That's the one. Then we'll go for the two, then the three, in the, uh, that okay so I'm going to set these zipper in a random order again so I'll go four you yeah. go for a one we'll go for a two we'll go for a a six we'll go for a three and then obviously the last number five okay so now when i put this on i put this on i snap my fingers this is an order that she named i didn't name this i didn't make a pick this look when i snap my fingers watch this I don't get this. I don't get how it's done that. Is this tube magical or something? I don't get. I'm gonna check this cube. I'm in a minute. I'm gonna just. I don't know what I'm gonna do. So, um, first of all, right, that was an incredible performance. That was one pick. That that was that was indeed one take. Incredible. And it took forever. It took forever. Like, I don't think I've seen him spend so much time learning a routine. Normally, he nails it almost immediately. You probably spent the best part of a week learning this, didn't you? Um, and the reason is, and this is the one thing that I... A day. Yeah, I, 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 I want you to understand, this is something that you can't just take out the box and practice and be able to do immediately. It's not that it's difficult. It's not difficult. But there's a lot of phases and a lot of things that you need to remember. And if you forget... And sometimes... Um... It might get stuck a bit. And we'll talk about that in a second. But but first of all, with regards to the memory thing, um, the uh, it, 
there's so many little things you need to remember. Like now you need to remember to turn the tube round. And if you don't turn the tube round, it's going to ruin the effect three phases later on, but you won't know until you get to that point. And then you need to make sure that you do this. And if you don't do that, that there's a lot that you need to learn. It's then you not, need to turn it round and then you need to go. Yeah, there's a lot that you need to remember. It's not difficult at all. There's no sleight of hand in there. Uh, it's it's easy to do. You don't need big hands or anything, as you can see from his hands. But it is something that's going to take but a I lot of... But I do it a bit differently because I'm a lefty. Yeah, you were a lefty. You had to change everything around, didn't you? Yes. Um, but it's, it's, that's the problem with it. The problem with it is it takes a long time to practice. But once you've got it down, like Ryland has now, once you've got it down, it is an incredible trick to do. Parlour... Uh, trade show stands this would be good on kids shows I reckon this would go really well in a kids show not for the little kids like the four three four year olds that can't really count that much yet you'd need to be old enough to find what's happening impressive I'd say sort of seven eight nine what would you say yeah seven eight nine seven eight nine like your age yeah. nine um y you're gonna find this impressive and and it Excuse me. It is really impressive because they see the, 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 the cubes. They see the numbered in one way. And this is very good quality. It is very good quality. Yeah, these are all really, really the well made. The shell's not that good. I've already... Like, there's two that have snapped a bit. Have they? Yes. Well, I didn't know that. Well, Put that back over there and talk to them about that. I didn't know that. You didn't tell me that. <laughs> Why did you not tell me that? I don't know. You thought I would be mad, didn't you? Yes. Yes. He has a habit sometimes of breaking gimmicks, don't you? <laughs> we don't want to go into what I've had to go through tonight with one of your broken gimmicks. Let's not go down that route because you owe me one big time. Tell them about the quality of the gimmicks. Um, well, um, the sides, um, when I was holding it, well, every time I hold it, um, the six, um, I think that's why it won't come down properly because it's bent, it broke a bit at the side because... Like, um, it's like, like you got the square and it bends like here. It broke here, so probably because when you're just holding it, it's like the six and the four. I don't know why the four is broke, but the six is usually at the bottom a lot. I don't know why the one's not broke, but the six, you're usually pushing there. And because it's broken, because it's broken, um, I think that's, like, because it's broken, it's like pushing into the things, which means it's not going down. And when I get a bit lighter force, that might mean it might come down a bit. Okay, so is it still workable? Yes, it's, it's still workable. I, I just did it with it broken. Okay, so it's not really affecting much. No, but... that was one take with it broken. Okay, okay, so it's, it's, it's slightly broken. I, I did, uh, sometimes I do notice that when you perform it... Oh, no, 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 doesn't matter. Uh, I do find sometimes that when you do it, sometimes it gets stuck. Is that because of you or is that because of the prop? I don't actually know. <laughs> Because it doesn't happen all the time. It's like one in every five performances. So yeah. is it user it error? It might be the it... shell. It might be the shell, actually. Like, it might be pushing in and then it's stopping it from going down. It might be the shell. It might be the shell. It could be something else. Or it just could. Or it could and is that shell it. fixable? Um, I don't actually... I don't think so. Okay, right. Fair enough. But it's not really affecting... It's not affecting it. Okay. Look, it's a really good trick. I need to examine this to make sure that he hasn't butchered it. But you, I, I joke, but you are quite careful with props generally as a rule. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it, I like it. It's a really visual trick. As long as it isn't broken, we will get back to you on that. I am going to follow up on this and make sure the quality is good. Because obviously, if the quality is not good and it's falling apart, then that's an issue and that affects the rating. But I mean, if it's broken slightly, but you can still do it and it doesn't affect the performance of the trick... Then, cubes are very good quality. Then they're, they're not like plastic, and if you accidentally like um, one falls on the floor and someone just walks in and you go, oh, what's that? It's not plastic, so it won't like break. It's, it's proper solid. Okay. Proper okay. solid. Well, what are you gonna give it? What are you gonna give it? I'm gonna. This is trick of the week for me. Trick of the week. Well, obviously, everything else is terrible. Yeah. So what are you giving it? I'm gonna give this. 119%. 119%. I'm gonna give this 79%. I really like it. I'm not, not going to do it. Oh, I'm not going to do it. Too much phases for you. Too many phases. I'm too old. I can't remember it all. Um, I, I like it. I think it's really good. I think it's more your thing than my thing. 
Yeah. You're into maths, you're into magic, and it kind of all... Maths, numbers, yeah. Yeah, exactly. All kind number of... magic. Number magic. I, I... Maths book thing that someone created, I forgot. Um... Uh, uh, it was Vinny Segu from uh, Neo. He gave you uh, for oh, your yeah. birthday. Yeah, yeah. he did. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I like it. Mind I, the maths tricks. Mind the maths tricks. That's, that's the one. what it's called. I'm, gonna do th I'm not going to do this. 79% from me. He is going to do it 119% from him. There you go. That's another uh, another really good product. The first good product from this week. And that's another review show in the bag. That's another review show in the bag. That's another review show in the bag, in the bag. with an absolute good trick and the others are terrible. Three terrible tricks, one good trick. Guys, do yes. me a favour, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of our reviews. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you agree with Lloyd on that replica and you actually think that replica is amazing? Well, I don't, but... No, neither do I. Um, uh, let us know in the comments down below. We want to know your opinion. We love it when we get feedback on this channel for our reviews. Uh, it means the world to us. We read all of them. So please leave a comment down below. Don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, most importantly, Please support Ryland. He is now on over 500 subscribers on YouTube. He is on over 200 followers on Instagram. The kid is popping. And a lot of the time, if you, you want to see... You've got well, lots. Yeah, I've got lots. You've got over 9,000 subscribers. I know. These days, if you want to see what's coming up on the YouTube channel, he puts it up on his Instagram account before it even goes live on YouTube. So if you want to so see... So if you want to have a sneak peek... <laughs> then go follow The Kid Magician on YouTube and Instagram. We're going to be back again next Wednesday with another Craig and Ryland review show. I'm going to be back tomorrow with another three videos. So on behalf not of Not all Ryan, the tricks are on there. Not all the tricks. Like, that's not on there. Oh, I don't think you... No, they're not. But some of them. Anyway, are you going to shut up now? Okay. We'll be back next week. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. We'll see you again. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.